Hello everybody, and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at the 2024 presidential election in the state of Iowa. Before I get into the data we have to look at today, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Like this video. Um, both doing, you know, doing even one of those two things does so much to help me out. You can also become a member. Uh, we, we've seen some more people joining the channel as of late for just uh, $2 a month. You can support the channel. But if you don't want to, if you can't, by no means should you feel obliged to do that. So with that being said, let's get into the video. Iowa poll from Selzer, the gold standard. 47% for Donald Trump, 43% for Kamala Harris. But you know, before we talk about these numbers, these percentages, what they mean, I want to tell you about Selzer, which is what is consistently known across uh, the political world in this country to be the best state poll there is. Simply, simply put, the gold standard. Selzer is a poll. It's it's done. It's run by J.N. Selzer, who I believe is affiliated with the Des Moines Register, um, and she works uh, within Iowa. She doesn't do. She doesn't poll other states, but she pulls Iowa. And her final polls, if you go back to the races in 2022, 2020, 2018, 2016, even back in 2012, they are perfect. They are spot on every time. She was the only pollster, or she was one of the only pollsters in 2016 to have Ted Cruz winning the uh, Iowa caucuses. So she's good in both the caucuses and the, or the primaries and the general elections. So when she says something, when her poll comes out, a lot of people, including myself, listen. So this is a very important thing to consider. And a lot of people were expecting Trump to be up by eight or nine points because, again, he won this state by eight in 2016. He won it by nine in 20 – or excuse me, he won it by nine in 2016. He won it by eight in 2020. So a lot of people thought he was going to be up by eight, nine, ten points. He's only up by four. He's not even at half the vote yet. And that's a concern for him. That is a legitimate problem because, again, when you consider how Iowa is uh, has, has um, voted in recent years, it's been moving away from Democrats at a very fast pace. Again – in 2012, Barack Obama won the state by five points, and then just four years later, it voted for Trump by nine. So we saw a 14-point swing towards Donald Trump in 2016. In 2020, it did move a point back towards Biden, but it still voted for Trump by eight. And that was a result that a lot of people were disappointed with because in the final pre-election polling in Iowa, Biden was only down by one or two points. So a lot of people thought Iowa was going to be close. It was not close either uh, time. And so the fact that in this state where Democrats have effectively been left for dead, in a state where Republicans have been winning by more and more, uh, you know, increase as of late, the fact that Harris is only down by four, that's huge. And Democrats and Republicans alike, I think, were surprised by this, especially because in this Selzer poll, Trump was leading Biden by 18 points in June. Selzer, same pollster. Trump was at 50 percent against Biden, uh, and Biden was only at 32. He wasn't even at a third of the vote yet. Obviously, he would have gotten more than 32 in any election, but the fact that he he'd only secured that many people, huge, huge indicator of a bad result for him. Uh, and again, one of the best pollsters that does any state. And so since then, Trump has lost 3% outright, but Harris has gained 11% over Joe Biden. And so that's why we've seen a 14-point swing um, towards uh, Kamala Harris, uh, towards the Democratic Party in Iowa. And so just to kind of talk a little bit more about what this means, right, like um, – I don't think I was going to be competitive this year. I know maybe some of you came to this video hoping to see me advocate for Iowa being competitive. I don't think it's going to be competitive. Kamala Harris and to people, and to people who, who support her, I think they know uh, that this state is gone for Democrats. Democrats haven't won a federal race here since 2012. Donald Trump has won here by eight, nine points both times. He'll likely win it by a similar margin again. Unless, um, by the way, my final prediction, I, I'm being so serious, on election day will just be whatever Selzer says, because Selzer has nailed this every time. Um, but again, the fact that uh, we th that Democrats know they can't win Iowa doesn't, right, like, I think that goes to show that the state is gone. But again, on the other hand, Iowa serves as a very useful bellwether for the uh, other states in the Midwest that are close to it that are actually competitive, right? Like Iowa borders Wisconsin, it's close to Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania to an extent, and so the Iowa vote is a bellwether, I would say, for how the rest of these states go. Because, again, Iowa, remember, is a state that's, I think, almost 90 percent white. I think it's in the high 80s percent white. So it is whiter than most of the states surrounding it. But the white vote in Iowa tends to be, you know, kind of swing in terms of direction uh, towards whoever is winning the Midwest. And in 2016, one of the best indicators that Trump was about to flip back the states of Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, as well as Ohio, in addition to Iowa, was that in the pre-election polling, Hillary Clinton was losing in Iowa in 2016 
on the election day in the polls. She was still winning in Wisconsin. She was still winning in Michigan, still winning in Pennsylvania, but she was losing in Iowa by a lot more than anyone could have thought. She was down there by a couple points. It wasn't even a dead heat. And that was a state that Obama had won by over five points four years prior. So Iowa was an early sign that Trump was going to do well in the Midwest. In 2020, the polls in Iowa did move towards Biden. But again, the actual election day vote in Iowa, we saw that white voters stayed pretty firmly with Trump. And again, the shifts in Wisconsin, in Michigan, and Pennsylvania were a bit more favorable to Biden than they were in Iowa. But Iowa still showed, the fact that Iowa still stayed pretty red was a sign that Biden was not about to win Michigan by seven, win Wisconsin by 10 or anything, right? Because some of the pre-election polling did suggest that. So Iowa does tend to vote relative to these uh, other key in Western states pretty um, consistently. And so that's why you have to look at Iowa because it does you know, serve that value. But just to kind of talk about the one shortcoming of this poll before I let you go here, right? Like, let's just talk about uh, Selzer in the past. Now, obviously, in 2020, if we look at their final poll, they were incredible. I mean, again, the average had Trump only up by 1.3. He won by 8%. Selzer's final poll had him up by 7 So, th- And again, this was the only poll that even showed Trump had a lead of more than 3. Survey Monkey did one poll where he was up by 3. So I guess good for them. But PPP had Biden up by 1%. Uh, Civics, uh, the Democratic turnout had Biden up by one. Chain Research had it tied. We saw Quinnipiac only had Trump up by one. Uh, RIBA Research had Biden up by four. Emerson had it tied. RMG had it tied. And so Emerson, or not Emerson, excuse me, Selzer was the only poll to come out and say, look, Trump's up by seven here. Trump's going to win the state easily. And, you know, lo and behold, Trump won uh, just a few days after this poll came out by eight points. And so Selzer, you know, kind of stepped in front of the bus and said, hey, everyone else is wrong. We're right. And they were the ones who were right. So that's, you know, is very significant. But to be fair, to, uh, you know, to not, you know, completely just, um, you know, p- provide a one-sided view of this, if we go back to our, uh, you know, polling from September on this date, Selzer, September 17th, today's the 16th, Selzer had a tied race. So Selzer in September was not accurate. They showed a tie in Iowa. And we saw this in 2022. Their final poll, Grassley won by 12, Selzer had him up by 12, so they were uh, bang on there. But again, in October, they had Grassley up by three, and then before that, in July, we didn't get a September one, but in July, he was up by eight, which was another underestimation. So again, I think the best comparison would probably still be that that October poll. Uh, Let's see if I can find, or yeah, that that October poll from the 12th. He was only up by three, and that did not end up being accurate because he won by 12, which again, not a knock on Selzer, but at this point in time, um, that is a concern for Democrats is that they can celebrate this poll being good news for them, but it's still only September. And again, who knows if two days before the election, Selzer is going to come back and say Trump's going to win Iowa by 11, because that would be a bad sign for Democrats. That would legitimately be a huge problem uh, for them. So obviously, uh, you know, I think you have to keep that in mind when we talk about this poll. It's definitely good news for Harris, the fact she's only down by four in the best state pollster in the country in a red state. That's a good sign for her. Genuinely, it is. And it bodes well for her in other Midwestern states. But again, it doesn't mean that Iowa is, you know, the outcome there is predetermined. We have to wait till the October or November poll drops, and then we'll know. Because again, as I've just shown you, in 2020, in November, and October, or in their final poll, really, they were right. In 2022, in their final poll, they were right. But in the second to last poll, in the early fall, late summer poll, they were not right. And that is the problem with uh, Selzer. So... Again, let me know what you want to see next. Let me know your thoughts on Iowa. Who do you think is going to win here by how much? I think, like I said, I think Trump's going to win probably comfortably by eight or nine points, similar to 2020. Um, uh, But again, you're free to let me know what you think, and I will uh, do my best to respond to productive commentary down below. So thank you for watching. Like the video, subscribe, and I'll see you all next one.